<laughs> Welcome everybody to the Reject Rundown Podcast again, peeps. This is Rejects in the Booth. I appreciate you guys joining us today, but I'm not alone. I do got SG3, special appearance, of course, random, as always. Old man RJ is here. He got some old wisdom to kind of spread out over here at this time right now. We'll try to be nice and try to pay attention, which it's not going to work, but just FYI. SG3, let's go ahead and say what's up to Let me peach. ask you, what wisdom is he going to spread uh, today? That's why I said, I don't know. Well, he'll probably try, but we'll see what happens. I need you guys to know, one plus one equals one in the bun. <laughs> <laughs> that's the wisdom of the day. There you go. There it is, right there. Check it out of his, out of his mouth. That's true. Go ahead. Go ahead, SG3. What's going on, guys? Me, it's me. It's SG3. How y'all doing? Uncle, uh, Uncle Old Man, Darn J, Lisp, producer, whatever the heck you want to call yourself nowadays. Go ahead, man. Say what's up to the people. Hello, people. I'm Darjay, as SG3 just called me a while ago. I and called you Uncle Darjay. Uncle Dar, yeah, you see? Look, I'm going to call you again, Uncle Darjay. <laughs> and I'm giving you a Jamaican to, accent. Uh, hey, rejects in the booth. And this is my, uh, you know, I'm here just to uh, take it along. All right, Tony, go on. Take it away, I guess. Okay, sounds good, old man. Appreciate you guys. But first things first, we got to get to the nit and greedy into all the things, of course. Last week... Canelo lost, I guess, uh, an upset in a way by many people, by Bevel. Hell yeah, grab out of fight so, that he lost. Absolutely. What? Yes, I agree. Saw the fight. I ended up actually watching it on, uh, you know, sorry, just had to stream it. Um, but it seemed like you could just tell Canelo's punches were not affecting Bevel at all. I'm, you know what, though, man? Let me, let me ask you a question. Let me, let me ask you a question. This, this, is, mm-hmm. this is just a question. Now, people want to take this out of context and go ahead and put put a put a put a bullseye on my chest because I'm gonna ask this question. That's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. He fought 175 pounds, did he not? Yes. So what's the difference between this guy mm-hmm. and Sergey Kovalev? What's the big difference? They're both 175 pounds, and he walked through Sergey Kovalev. He walked and knocked him out. Yep. Why can't he do the same with this guy? What's the, what's the big difference this time? Right. Was it the fact that he had actually had a training camp? Was it the fact that he didn't have a fight a week before and then had to sign a contract and then get back into training? Was it the fact that he wasn't drained? Was it he actually made him go up? Is that what happened? Because mm-hmm. that's what it sounds like to me. Where's the man? Magician, give me some insight. Talk to me, please. Well, Gary Robinson used to fight weekly, actually. I mean, and he would win week for no, no, no. week. So I, I, I'm once, just saying toward yeah. that whole thing about Kovalov and all that. No, no, no. Um, So, once again, though, this is a man, though, who was out of his prime, though. There's not a man that was going into his 40s. Oh, okay. So this is not a man who was in his early 20s. Mm-hmm. Not a man who was in his 30s. This is not a man that was going into his 40s. Mm-hmm. You just had a fight. You just had a six-week training camp. Mm-hmm. You had a fight that basically went 12 rounds. Mm-hmm. You turn right around and you go right back into a six-week training camp. Mm-hmm. Pretty much you had your gas up by the time you fought the fighter in a fight. But then on top of that, though, you went from 175, 178 down to 168 pounds and still put your butt on the line. That's rough. That's weird. That's rough on the body. That's kind of like what uh, Chad Dawson said when he had to fight uh, Andre Ward and it's like, he knocked me out because I had to come down to his weight. Mm-hmm. He's like, if he would have came up to mine, it would have been a different story. Mm-hmm. Um, tell you the truth, that's... I mean, boxing was dying. I'll say it right now and I'll say it again. Boxing has been dying. Mm-hmm. It's about time Canelo actually went up and said, Hey, you guys keep criticizing me? Let me show what I could do. He went Which up a weight. Ain't a nothing. That's good, though. At least it proves... And probably you weren't as good as you thought you were. No, it, dude, at this point, it's about, hey. and, and here it is, it's about, it's about exposing people, man. And this is what it is, dude, that, again, hey, you know what, I'm a Pacquiao fan, y'all go ahead and come to me for, for following Pacquiao, and it's cool. He did the same thing to Cotto, he did the same thing to, to a lot of boxers. But Cotto did the same thing to Sergio Martinez. Yeah, Sergio Martinez had just recently got done with two with two bad knees. Mm-hmm. The moment the first punch landed against Martinez, his knee gave out. Mm-hmm. You see it in the fight. His knee comes out completely. His trainer tells him, your knees are gone. Like, you have no knees, Sergio. 
Mm-hmm. You either you stop the fight or I'm stopping the fight. You mm-hmm. cannot fight anymore. You're done. And this basically goes to show you, dude, that this whole catch weight put your butt. Look, man, if y'all want to have a catch weight fight, I'm cool with it. I don't care for a catch weight fight, but why put the belt on the line? If your belt is 175 pounds, fight at 175 fucking pounds, and that's it. Plain and simple. You don't have to say, "Look, dude, I beat this. I beat this 175 pound guy because I brought him down to 168 fight mm-hmm. to 168 pound fight." Like, absolutely not. It's you. 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 You're basically taking away the 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 person who fought. You're taking away. Their credibility, mm-hmm. you're taking away their strength, you're taking away their whatever they built at 175. There's people who are naturally made for that weight. Mm-hmm. So now for you to bring them down, you're discrediting them doing so much to their body that you know that, you know what, I'm comfortable where I'm at. It's like you. Honestly, Uncle RJ, you are a 200 some odd pound man. If someone told you, dude, let's fight, but I want you to go down to 150 pounds, how would you feel? You know what? Too rough for me to even pull it off. I'm not even gonna put you down 50. I'm gonna put you down just 15 pounds, from 200 to 185. How are you gonna feel then? That's actually being generous. I'm uh, 250 actually. Um, so if I was to go 15 pounds less, and then you're at 235 now. How soon will my fight be? So I'm looking at six months where I have to lose six weight. Six weeks. Six weeks. So I got six weeks to lose weight. And probably against a guy who has pretty much been accustomed to his weight as it is. Mm-hmm. So I'm walking into what they would say, um, you know, that thing where like you walk into an ambush. It's a dead man walking on a green mile nine times out of ten. That's true. And to tell you the truth, the worst part is that Close of Love had to come from one fight to jump to another and lose weight. So it's telling you right away that Canelo. Wanted to train his fighter, make him weak, so I could look good. And he did that, and people bought it. And yeah, and finally, when he meet when he met somebody who said, "No, no, no, we're not doing this whole catch weight. We're not. I'm not lowering myself. If you want to go after my belt, mm-hmm. you need to come up to my weight. And fight we're gonna fight team. at my weight. Yep. And then once I'm done whipping your ass, <laughs> which he did, that's true. I'm gonna call you out at your weight class, and I'm gonna take what's rightfully also mine mm-hmm. at your weight class, because I'm going down to your weight class and whipping your ass now. Yep, that's true. And you know what though? This is what I like the most about it. I didn't know this guy was a champion. No, nobody I, did. No. The sad part is when we're looking at this fight, everybody was like, when they mentioned this fight, I know against this guy, Bibbital, Bibbital, whatever. When they mentioned Bibble. Canelo versus Bibble, um, they said who? Mm-hmm. Everybody on the comments, you look at the comments, they said who? Right. They said boxing is trash. They said he's just cherry picking. Mm-hmm. Now that Canelo loses, what's everybody saying? He went against an elite champion. He yes. went against a good fighter. He went against this. What changed? So, I'm going to tell you right now, right now. I don't call Bibble an, an elite champion. But I call him a champion because mm-hmm. what he said at the end, he said, and I quote, The next time I fight him, I want the respect of the champion that I am and mm-hmm. that I deserve to be. So it's like, I get the fact that, you know what, Canelo was the main card here and Canelo's the guy selling the fight and Bilbo was a challenger. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to, Bilbo's a champion and Canelo's a challenger. Correct. And of course, your cash cow, your money cow's Canelo. Mm-hmm. But why put this guy so much under the bus when you know we know who the champion was now at the end of the night? Yep. It's like at this point, what what, what was the match for? You know, there was no talk about a, a future weight, you know, nothing like that. It was like, oh, this is Canelo just basically just trying to eventually go up to heavyweight. Mm-hmm. So at this point, one more time. Mo- everyone says who? Everyone says, wh- like, who is this person? Why not start promoting champions to what they're supposed to be? And actually, one of, someone from my mom's side of the family actually brought it up and said, what boxing needs is like a Dana White that knows how to mentor and speak for your champion. 
In a sense, yes. But yeah. also, too, cut cut all the championships. Why do... That, 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 that's a that big true. thing that's been boxing that, has been saying that, for years. Yeah. It's always, why have so many championships yeah. for all these weight classes? The fact that you have all these championships for these weight classes, it's it's kind of giving away the meaning behind the true well, here, what, here, the vision so, that they're going for. Because honestly. it's different for heavyweight, because heavyweight is the heavyweight champion of the world. You know what I mean? That always carries some stigma when it came down to Ali, Tyson, you know, Ken Norton. Then you got freaking, back in the day, Joe Frazier. Then you had, the, like, around uh, that time frame, Roy Jones wanted to go up a little bit and get a test, a taste of it since he was light heavyweight. So that's always been the big key on that market side. But because you're the smaller guy, you're, they're creating all these different weight classes and stacking them on. Because I, I can't be somebody until I have so many X amount or whatever case it be. That's the thing. It's more of a protection. Uh, your guy is fighting fighters at catch weights most of the time, right. or that belt. And most of the times, he's not fighting somebody who's at that weight for that belt. Mm-hmm. Imagine people who went out weight and said, "I'm going to go out weight, but I'm going to fight this guy who's also going out weight." Correct. You never heard anyone say, "Hey, I'm going to go out weight and challenge Roy Jones Jr." Oh, the only one that did that was Tito Trinidad, who challenged Bernard Hawkins, and look what happened to him. Exactly. So That's it was. Why, it's just that type of standard. It's because we lost our. And I'll say it again: the boxing community lost its hunger. It's cojones. Yeah, that's how you say it. It's, I mean, it's their on. cojones. I mean, you're looking at and I the said mafia. Before, and I mentioned it again, you're looking at a fighter like Bud Crawford right now. Bud is calling people out. He's not sitting at home saying, "Oh, well, I'll just wait till somebody, you know, somebody puts the right money on the table, and we'll see if my." People want to negotiate it out. No, but it's like I want my fights. I want my name to be known. Attached to it. Like Attached it was, to like it. a Golovkin when first came over. Yeah, after the, after the Rosado fight. Like we said every time, you know, I want a Mexican style fight. Mm-hmm. He called the Canelo since 2016. He's been saying, "I want Canelo. I want Canelo. I want Canelo." Every single fight, I want Canelo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Finally, after he's taking the little dip in the power and the knockout streak stops, Canelo says, "You're next." Oh, okay, cool. So you basically waited. Mm-hmm. That's cherry picking to me. Well, and a lot of fighters have done it. I mean, there's not one fighter who didn't cherry pick. But that's what I'm saying. Though. A guy like Bud Crawford, though, yeah. I want anybody. Mm-hmm. That's Put the me. mentality Put- of the good old days, man. Exactly. Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, freaking Marvin Hagler. Marvelous. Tom. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Put that's, some respect on the name, sorry. That's right. Thank you, rest in peace. That's right. Uh, the hey man Tommy Hearns. Yes, there you go. Freaking Romano de Pierda, Ron Roberto Duran. Rest in peace. He died? I thought he did. I'm not even sure. We gotta look that up. Mm-hmm. But you got those guys that fought each other because they wanted to prove I'm the best of this class. Mm-hmm. You had freaking Rocky Mars, not Rocky Marceno. Uh, what's his face? Jake LaMotta took on Sugar Ray Robinson six different times. And only won once. Mm-hmm. And it's not until the Valentine's Day Massacre where he's like, you know, we can't do this no more. Yeah, that's true. But he went six times trying to beat the man he couldn't beat. Now, do you think De La Hoya, looking at it, De La Hoya had a few choice of words when it came into into this fight. And right now, he's kind of going around media he's talking about that, you know, this was the dumbest idea that Canelo's promoter could do for him. Do you man, have some man, carry some weight to that? I'm, I'm done. I'm done with Oscar. Oscar just needs to shut the fuck up and be a promoter. <laughs> straight, straight up. I'm tired of Oscar De La Hoya trying to still stay his name in the fucking light. Just yeah. Shut the fuck up. Stay in the back where you belong. <laughs> Pack already done. Tired your ass. Yeah. Shut the hell up and actually start making fights. That's right. Make fights that people want to see. Correct. Stop trying to sit there and say, "Oh, guys, I'm coming out of retirement. I'm going to have a fight in May." I'm gonna have a fight in May. I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna fight Canelo. I'm right. gonna fight Pacquiao. I'm gonna fight this person. Fight that. Just shut the fuck up. Do what you gotta do. What you what you created, which was Golden Boy Promotions. Well, which I haven't heard anything from from the more. Because guess what? They lost their cash cow. Mm-hmm. So. Ryan Garcia. No. Huh. Canelo. 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 And Garcia. Trying to push Garcia now. I, last time I no, heard. Canelo was on, after the Garcia. See, what happened was Golden Boy had Canelo and Garcia. Then, for some odd reason, they lost both. 
because I believe Garcia's contract came up and he's like, I'm going to go with Canelo and join their team. But then now Canelo did some shady stuff behind the curtain or whatever in some interviews. And Garcia's like, now I'm on my own. Now I'm solo dolo. I'm not with, I'm not associating myself with that production company. So mm-hmm. now he's in, he's going out there. This last fight that he did, all by himself. So this next fight that he's going into, that what they're trying to say, that's another one that he's trying to go on by himself. And pretty much are those even good fights? Or are those- well, the next one is the title fight. I think he's in the mix between him and... Uh, what's Supposedly his it's... I think he's going to try to go... Eventually. I think it's after whoever fights right he's now. Trying to go, fight next. He's going to go after Haney. Yeah, so there you go. Escaping, he's still trying to avoid... He's escaping the little... The, the cash heads that are trying to, you know, cherry pick in a sense, you put it that no, way. No, no. One of my so, friends, yeah. he's not trying to fight Tank at all, is he? All well, he talking. wants to fight Tank, but okay. right now, I, and I don't think he just has that power just yet to put that on there for Tank to get the money that he's looking for. Right ah, because he, no. he doesn't have negotiation power. That's not even that. He just knows that if he goes up against Tank, Tank's gonna knock him the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what I'm him. saying. I mean, Tank's gonna knock him the fuck you're out. You're supposed to be the king. Uh, you wear a crown and all that. I see that with you every time, Ryan. But till to this day, you've been avoiding the guy that you keep saying you could beat. So why not prove it to us and everybody around the world that you could beat him? Get in there. Get when the has boxing become a sport of sissies? <laughs> That's my problem. Boxing has become. I'm gonna cherry pick this guy, even though this guy is the guy that people believe I should fight because he's really good and he could take me on. Yep. I'm gonna fight this guy who's a taxi cab driver. I'm going back to the taxi cab days where we fought taxi cab drivers and bar stool owners. Nope. I don't worry about the real boxers. No, I'm just gonna put. I'm not getting no zero in my name. That's a problem nowadays. I mm-hmm. hate to say it, but because you can honestly say that since the day, since Mayweather oh, God. really hyped up the O, everybody wants the O now. Well, yeah, that's true. Everybody wants it's the O, but nobody's willing to prove that they earned that O. I think it's the same. It's the same transition they did with you know LeBron James and the NBA. Same transition. Let me go on to the super team in order to get the championship quicker than. You know, that quicker than any other legendary NBA basketball player has ever done. Let me not go through the hustle, grind, sweat, tears, and stuff like that. Let me go this way so, and question. get it out of the way. Looking at LeBron James' status as a NBA playoff champ- player, you know, and inside the championships himself. You know. How many of those playoffs did he have an elite team? Where he won and where he lost. And how many of those did even make it to the playoffs when he didn't have an elite team? He actually made it in 2007 in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He lost to Boston. Uh, he basically has been in the playoffs almost every single season except for maybe like at least four. Mm-hmm. But how many times who were in his team? In 2003, he didn't have anybody. It was just him. It was him, right? Mm-hmm. 2003 was just him. He lost to Boston. Um, 2004... Um, actually, no, excuse me, 2004, he went in the league. And then, basically, he took the he took the Cavaliers. Then he didn't have anybody. He eventually got a washed-up Shaq. Yeah. I mean, great, that, you got that Shaq. Was, that was, the, yeah, that was like the last two years of Shaq's career. So, mm-hmm. wasn't that great. With so, knee problems, all that good stuff. So, basically, at that point, it's still him by himself. Um, and then after that, that's when he decided... Because it was after I graduated high school, a year later, after that summer, excuse me, two summers later, he then makes the decision to go to Miami. Yeah. Which is then when the championships run started happening from there. Actually, not the first year, though. No, first year, he went to the finals. I thought the first year they lost. First year, he went to the finals, but they lost. Yeah, that's one thing. The first year they lost. First year they lost. Second year they second year they won. Third year they won. Fourth year they lost. Fifth mm-hmm. year came to Cleveland, lost. Mm-hmm. Sixth year won. Seventh year lost. Eighth year. Who the heck? I can't even remember because I know he's been there ten times. He's only won it four. Yep, he's four and he's four and six. It's a losing record in my book. But not the point of the conversation. Yeah, okay. no. But I was just saying, like I was adding to Anthony about how you know. We 
the stigma looking, to the whole yeah, transition. Stigma to that. the transition of you want to be great, but you don't want to work for greatness. Yes, agreed. Back then, dude, guys like Muhammad Ali fought the greats. But at this well, point, I mean, in a sense, yes, because it's also in the same scenario. Like, well, oh, and a lot of people are going to be like, well, what about the stats? You know, same thing with Mayweather. Well, what about his defense and how? What about his, you know, tri- you know, his contributions and all this kind of stuff? Like, listen, you can con- contribute whatever you want in the middle of things. It's all so also Luis Castillo. It's like the Madonna. So it's like you just don't like the bigger picture is. It shows. It just shows. So it's like you're just only narrow, narrowing the vision in order for you to focus on this one thing in order for you to feel like that's why he's the greatest. And it doesn't when you look at it broader. Listen, no. man. So here, here's the thing. When Mayweather was when Mayweather focused so much on the oh, and everyone was like, oh, he's undefeated. And, oh, undefeated and undefeated. This is the thing that got me. Is that Back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, nobody cared about the stupid old. Nope. They cared about the names on the resume. Yep. They cared about the names that you had just beaten. Yep. They cared about the names you fought. Yep. Sometimes when they say most notable fights, I'm like, who? Yes. Like, I was like, hey, who? Like, okay, cool. If you didn't watch the fight, you don't know who it was. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, you can say you had a, a Duran versus a, a, a Robinson. You had a Hearns versus... Versus a, a marvelous, marvelous one. You yes. had Ali versus Frazier. You had Ali versus Foreman. The great. Heck, at this point, great. you had Wilder versus Fury. Tyson, that's right. In Even this that. modern, modern day and age, you that's, had that. Hell yes. And you also had Arturo Gatti versus Mickey Ward back in those days. Hell I mean, but yes. But I'm trying to say, say this day and age, though. Yeah. This day and age, the last good one was Wilder versus Fury. Tyson. I'm saying, but in the lower weight classes? Well, who's, who's Nothing. You can't really, I can't really think of anyone. And even when he did, even when Mayweather decided to do the Pacquiao versus Mayweather, how long did it take you to do all that? Not just that, but how many? He wouldn't take it unless Pacquiao proved that he wasn't on steroids. Mm-hmm. And Pacquiao for a long time also kept denying, "I don't want to do it. I don't want to put myself in that drug test." It, they, it wasn't even that, dude. It was a fact that it was like, "I want a drug. I want a blood test. I want Olympic style testing." But I want it all the way up until the fight. The fight, like basically, like night of the fight. So they can drain you mm-hmm. and be all and be all disoriented by the time you get in the ring. So mm-hmm. at this point, it's like most people are like, "Oh boy, it's only fair." Well, cool, I see it. But when was Mayweather gonna get tested, and when was Pacquiao gonna get tested? Mm-hmm. There's a difference in timing. Yep, definitely. So. To make um, things all simple, just like play, plain and simple, dude. I went on a whole tangent. Yeah. Um, I just feel that Canelo finally got what he deserved. Mm-hmm. What I've been saying for years, dude's a bum. Anyone that sat there and said he was one of the greatest, no, he's not. Dude is a bum, cherry picking bum. <laughs> and if Bivol is a man of his word, which I believe he is. Mm-hmm. He's going to go down to 168. He's going to do what he can. And take them titles. Yep. Plain and simple. He wants that next fight. So, leave it on the table like that. Okay? We'll leave it on the table like that. We're going to move on to MMA because last week also, too, during the Canelo fight, UFC 274 was in the mix. A lot of crazy things that occurred during that night. Like, Nama Nunes losing her title, which made things crazy. And out of control as to why she lost again to her opponent. It was very confusing that she lost to this opponent, you know, way back when. Um, Esparza is the last name, of course, everybody. She lost to her, in, like, in the beginning stages of Namanuza's career. But yet, it looks like during that match, she wasn't very entertaining enough, put it that way, of course. And she ends up, you know, oops, sorry, losing my ring. Uh, basically dropping the title after the decision. Lost the decision. So, sorry for Nama Nunes, but it looks like she's looking to get her rematch back against the Spars. And hopefully this next time, you know, Nama Third Nunes... Time term type of thing. Exactly. She can ramp it up a little bit because she was kind of stalling, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, hopefully go from there. So, let's, get, let's hope for the best for that one. Now, other news on that one. On 274, Michael Chandler... Knocks the hell out. Literally. 
knocks the hell out of Tony Ferguson in the second round. With a foot, a straight foot to the chin. Like nasty style. Mm -hmm. So now after that goes, Chandler in the first round, Chandler was looking pretty in trouble, it seemed like. He was so close to being submitted. But, you know, I guess got his win back into him. Started to kind of move around a little bit. And uh, come out straight shot out of the second round. He just straight front kick. Boom. Knocks him out. Who would have known? Who would have known? Both of these guys needed the W because both of them kind of on a losing, not you know, losing half and half kind of sense. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one type of scenario. So this was a must win between the both of them. But at the end of the fight, looks like Chandler's calling out everybody. Calling out McGregor. Which that's a very intriguing match to have. Why does everybody still want to make him relevant? I don't know. I don't either. But that's a, that's tell. that is true. But I think I think Chandler will be the one guy to literally knock his block off. So that will be a match I'm looking forward to. But Chandler also called out Oliveira, rematch against him. Also to again against Gaethje, rematch against him because. To see at the end of the night, to see where they end up, he said, "Either one, whoever wins, lose. I want the I want the next opponent. Either way, too as well. And if if McGregor wants to go up to 170, I'll get him too. Let's do this. You know what I mean? Entertaining guy. I did at the end of the fight. That's the type of fighter you want at the end of the match to be like just calling out names and say, "Who's next? Let's go. Let's make this fight happen. You know? And he's not afraid to lose. So Thank it you. Means that he's willing to fight the guys who beat him. He wants to fight them again and." Mm -hmm. See if he can still beat them or not. Exactly. Mug's a fighter. Michael Chandler's a fighter. So, that's not bad. Now, Oliveira, the main event, didn't make weight the night before. Looks like he missed it by a pound or two or whatever. So, either way, if he would have won at the end of the night, supposedly, that it was for a vacant UFC title. He ended up... And it's, it's a very weird rule, everybody. He ends up losing it because he didn't make weight. So even if he did win, he wasn't going to keep the title, supposedly. So it was basically Justin Gaethje's, you know, to gain in this sense, right? So first round comes in. Justin Gaethje looked fantastic at the beginning of the round. Looked phenomenal. Knocking him. Gave him good left-right hooks. Knocked Oliveira down to the ground. Everyone's thinking, oh, this is Gaethje. He's going to take it. And then something happened where Oliveira just pulled a one-two hit combo, knocked Gaethje down the ground, got on top, choked him out, and the first round. Submit it. Look at that. So Oliveira ain't no joke. Seems to be a real deal, defending champion. Who's to say to take his title from him right now? I don't know. People are putting McGregor in the mix of that one too as well. But I. Like like SG three, I can give two shits and him defending going for title belts Only anymore. One that would be a good fight for Oliveira is a man who retired. He would have to. I don't know if he's in the weight class. Oh, could be. Time. Yeah, that's the title that he ended up giving up. So yes, I would have to agree with you on that. That's the only guy I could see that if you're gonna if you want a match that people are gonna sit down, put money on. Yeah. Probably even go to watch it and put a lot of money to be there. You want the guy who put the belt up. That's right. And Oliver to fight the champion who never lost it. That is true. I think I'll go with that one. So hopefully we can kind of see any further news happening. But I'm very intrigued with the Chandler versus McGregor. Just to, just so I can see Chandler knock him off. USA versus Ireland. And basically USA kicking Ireland's ass at this time right now. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Those are words from Tony just, yeah. and Irish people. Yeah, just saying. Just saying. Anyways, moving on to soccer news. SG3, anything happening in the soccer world? Out there, absolutely. Uh, so today, my Liverpool fans, congrats, Reds. You as they say, you'll never walk alone. Did today they did not walk alone. However, though, they may have lost Mo Salah. Ooh. Mohamed Salah ended up getting hurt in the 31st minute of the, of the FA Cup final. Hopefully that he is okay because the, F, uh, the Champions League final is coming up on May 28th for between Real Madrid and Liverpool. Mm. This is that one season where all Madrid fans are all like, why couldn't it just be one game and done? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, all Manchester, City, all Manchester City fans are saying, why couldn't it be one game and done? Manchester City signs Erling uh, Haaland. I'm sorry if I butchered his name, but not my intention. Uh, Kylian Mbappe re-signs with PSG. Uh, hopefully they're looking to re-sign back Neymar, so we'll see what happens. Mm. My Manchester United, 
Yasak. Barcelona, Yasak. Uh, <laughs> um, that's all I got for right now. Tony the Kid, uh, what's next on the on on the on the schedule? NBA, everybody. N B A. Man. What well, it's what's happening, it's right now, it's what's going on, it's the drama, it's the drizzle. It's all that in the news that's popping locking over there. I feel so bad for me this season, dude. I thought Embiid was gonna take it. I he, listen, I I knew he was gonna go anywhere. When you're uh, part, when you're paired up with James Harden, be prepared to lose in the no, finals. No, no, you know what, no man. Okay, it wasn't even it wasn't even his fault, dude. It wasn't even like Harden like because he did bad. Just it was bad. It's just bad luck, bad juju. Harden don't bring no good juju in the playoffs. He just yeah. doesn't bring the juju. He just does not, and it's it's sad to say. And like I said, I, I, like I said before, with James Harden, he's a hell of a player, hell of a phenomenal offensive player. This and the guy can. Season. <laughs> thank you. That's exactly correct. During the regular season, he can pull shit out of his ass like no other and make it look like a golden egg, right? So great for him. Good for him on that part. But when push comes to shove, when the titles are on the line, are you taking it home? And obviously, nine times out of ten, or at this point right now, ten out of ten, he ain't taking nothing home. So he's, really? he's going home himself, empty-handed. So it's sad to see it that way. But, you know, let's put it this way, everybody. It's the, it's the type of situations that they put themselves in. When you start getting paired up with these type of dynamic major teams that have these type of elder NBA players thinking if you're going to be a dynamic team, this is what happens. Should have stayed on the Rockets. He should have been left alone. No paired up with no big guy. Give him some solid bench role players. Give him some solid role players in the mix, in the starting lineup. Actually, good defenders, reliable, consistent players. And he would have been perfectly fine. You know what, though? Hold on, wait. Aside from that, Mm -hmm. did y'all hear about Kyrie? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving? No. Kyrie's talking about retiring, and Nike's looking to, to pull the plug on his de- on his deal. Oh wow! Like Nike is like, if you retire, we're done. Like, really? We're cut? Yeah, no. oh, okay. I read it somewhere where they where they're talking about it. Because mm-hmm. he's like, I may just retire. Because I think he, I think this season he feels like he took too much from the outside world. He took it. Yeah, he did take a lot. Of- but at this point, though, okay, you know what? He brought that upon himself, though. Th- thank you. Yes. Thank you. He did. And and you know what? Even then, it's like when the mandate was lifted in yes. New York, and you can finally play. You should have had the most stamina of everybody. That is true. You had played less than twenty games. That is true. At that point, you're at, you're more than a hundred percent. You should have been doing a, almost a hundred points a game. Mm-hmm. You should have been putting on Cleveland Kyrie numbers, That's not true. Boston Kyrie numbers. That is true. What happened? He's not that guy. Not that guy. He's never, you know, ever since he left, ever since he's left no, LeBron. No, no, no. You know what it was? Ever since LeBron stiffed him, no. honestly, let's be okay. honest. Ever since <laughs> LeBron stiffed him for the MVP, he just yeah. hasn't been the same. Mm-hmm. I can see that. I can see that very well. Now, because he's been trying so hard to prove, I deserve the MVP. There, yes, he's been trying to prove that he's the it guy. He's the it player. He's the number one. That he can be the number one, and it's not rolling out that way for him. So sad to say, but otherwise, in positive side of things, the Heat move on. Jimmy Butler again gets to the advancement, goes to the finals, conference finals. Sorry, Easter. Okay. So hopefully we get to see what's going to happen between the Celtics and the Bucks tomorrow, or uh, at this point Sunday. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it's already Sunday because it's already midnight. That is true. Uh, to kind of see where they leave from there, they had Game Six over there in Milwaukee. Looks like Celtics took it home. Jason Tatum said, "Hell no, sorry, Giannis, you're you're not that guy. Not facing me at this time right now. I'm not letting you take this that easily. And I'm going to bring my team up and let's go. Let's get it." Forty six. That Man. was not. Good. That was pretty good. Pretty good for. Pretty good for a guy. You know what I mean. I like the guy. I always liked to take him over Simmons. Just saying. When I, they first I, came I, out, I don't, of I don't think you're. I don't think you're. You're alone on that boat. Thank you. So uh, not bad. I just feel that. I think Boston may win. I think so too. They're, I think they have momentum. They're going back to Boston. Come on now. They got the momentum. 
It's not just that though, dude. Boss is getting scary. Mm-hmm. And wh- whoever that coach is, I've I've been praising that man as genius for years. He's been secretly quiet on the bench, m- maneuvering the offensive plays, the defensive roles, the schemes that he's pulling up, and it's really starting to show in the gameplay. But I agree with you on that. that That's man, actually that secretly right. That man behind yeah. the t- hey, man is a genius. He's like the puppet master at this time right now in the background. So I agree with you there. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. So we'll see how that goes. Otherwise, Golden State also advances. They hit the four and two against against the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies try to, you know, give some fight. Given well, there, you know, let me ask you a question: Had the injury not happened to Ja, would yesterday have would yesterday have happened? No. For some reason, I don't know. This it's he's a rookie this year, ain't he? I think so. Either this year or last year was his rookie season. By the way, like he's not not even five years in the league. I yeah, not yeah, definitely not. And yet he's making such a big splash that he's went against the dynamic trio at this time right now, or quadruple because of Wiggins. Supposedly he's coming up with some good plays, but I don't know. Um, and yet he was this close to uplifting his team to beat the Warriors. I'm so yes. As long as though because Patrick Beverly then. When John Morant scores 47, goes on Twitter and says, he didn't score no 47 on us. Nah, he didn't score 47, but he still sent y'all home. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's interesting to say the least. It's interesting to say the least. So, I, you know, at this point right now, Golden State is looking like, to me, the pre-KD Golden State. Where they're coming together as a team. They're relying little bits of... Steph, the reliant, you know, Thompson. Thompson's kind of stepping in a little bit more now. Man. So, you know, it's getting there. It's getting that to momentum. It's getting very scary. So maybe in the Western Conference Finals, that's where things are going to look interesting, to say the least, when it comes back to hopefully maybe the Suns or Mavs to see what happens there. If the I Suns, like to see the Suns. If the Suns pull out the victory against the Mavs, then, yes, it's getting there. But this has been one hell of a matchup between Booker and, and uh, Luka. Love this. Now, this is basketball. Number one, it guys going against each other, saying, F you, I'm going to play, but you're, you know, you're B. They're, call, they're talking mad shit to each other right now in the game. Uh, it's like fantastic. Exactly. And I love it. I love the shit talking. That's I love the game NBA playing. used to be. I mean, yes. look at Jordan talk trash to everybody he oh, played. Every oh, single Larry Bird. That's yeah, right. I was about to say. And Magic goal. Johnson went back and forth. To there you go. Now, yes. Larry, Larry Bird. Literally went to somebody and said, I'm going to score this much on you. And yep. started counting down from where he was scoring yeah. to a guy, to mm-hmm. Buddy. That's what Jordan did to a guy he played, too. Mm-hmm. He took that That's Jordan Bird. didn't even tell him. Mm-hmm. Jordan just started scoring. He shoots the ball, scores. He's like, 38. No, he said 48. <laughs> he goes back, scores another one. He's like, 45 or something. He just keeps going down and down and down. And he's counting. And the guy who's playing defense against him is like... What the heck is this guy doing? Yeah. It catches on to him. This guy is counting all the points he's about to make on me. Because if I'm not mistaken, that same guy says something in an interview right before that game and says he's not he's not going to score this X amount of points on me. Oh, really? Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll take that person. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the type of gameplay in the NBA that shows what we like about the damn sport. Well, you know? because it gives us the passion. Look at, the, look at every team right now. The only one that... I believe it's stacked as just the Warriors. But if you look ahead, aside from the Warriors, tell me what team right now in the finals mm-hmm. is stacked in the last teams that are standing right now. Phoenix. Phoenix? What do you got? Chris Paul, Devin Booker. I mean, they got the center. The center is to play. Aiton. Crowder's in there. Yeah, they're pretty stacked. They're, they the kept bench, a, a they lot. Got, they got Joel McGee. Ex- the reason why I've always said the Suns look like a scary team because they kept their key players, the key core that made them to the finals last season. They kept them this season, and yet they were dynamic during there. The one thing that's which has been coming out is the fact that when you get to the playoffs, there is a different level of players, or at least the expectation for these teams is to step up, step it up. It's not, it's not even. It's not even. It's not even the players. It's just the momentum. Look at look at Rajon Rondo. No, oh, yeah, play it. Regu- play regular play season, off Rondo. Regular Hell, season, exactly. eight points per game. Yes. Some uh, a single like a couple of double digits here and there, a couple of double digits here mm-hmm. and there. It's playoff Rondo, twelve yes. points, six triple dub yeah. Rondo right there. Yeah, no lie. So that's why it's like it, it's a different animal. It's a different atmosphere. It doesn't matter if you're the number eight going against the number one. 
different animal. It's a different ball, <coughs> different ballpark, different game. Which is a good surprising shock that the Mavs have been such a good, uh, a deep, like actual team against the Suns. They're not even deep. Exactly. They're, not they're, even deep. they're really not. That's they're the scary hungry, part. But they're hungry. The fact that Luca's stepping it up, and because my thing with Luca last season was, is he gonna is he gonna be another Rondo? Is he gonna be a highlight? Uh, not Rondo. A uh, Harden, where you give us a bunch of highlights during the regular season. But all of a sudden, playoff comes around. You just can't get past the first hump at all whatsoever. So and now everyone called him crazy when they got rid of Porzingis this season. And then it's like, boom. You know what I mean? Like now that he's stepping into it, he's stepping into the lead role. Talking about, I, come on, players, I got this. Follow me. Let's get this game playing. I'm talking that smack against the it guy over there. Let's move it. Let's get the ball running. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're young. They're young. They're hungry. We're hungry. Let's give it. Let's get a pop a lock. At this time right now, that's why it's a great matchup between these two, and I love to see what's going to happen Sunday night when they play each other. At the heck, o'clock. yes, it's going to be fantastic. Dang. So we're going to look and see how that goes. Okay, so we'll see how things they turn out there. On SG three's eyes. I know, right? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to say the least to see what happens with that with those two teams. Who's going to be facing Golden State? We shall see. Wherever it is, it's in, it's in trouble. Mm-hmm. Agree. I agree. <laughs> totally agree. All right. Other than that, everybody, that's all I got for. I got one more. Oh, never mind. Pass on to SG3 before we dip out. Go NFL ahead. NFL schedule was released. Huh? NFL schedule was released. No. I sent it to y'all. Come, come on, man. Come, no, come no, on, no, man. No, come no, on, baby. No, no, no. no. Well, well, baby. This is the year where SG3 and Tony Kidd are both going to boycott the Bears. But I'm not watching no Bears this season. I'm really not. I'm going to... No, I'm not. I'm gonna watch. You know what? I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch the first three games of the preseason, and I'm done. I'm done. I'm not watching no more. I oh, just watch the preseason. I watch preseason. Being that generous. Yes. Oh, when I yeah. boycotted them, I didn't watch anything at all. Yeah, I watch the three preseason games, and I'll leave it at that and leave it alone. So, all right. So, guys, go ahead. So here we go. Here goes the here goes the Bears. You know what? You know what? Old man, wise man, wise man, grand wizard of them all. Listen, I'm gonna man. tell you about how how bad the game's gonna look when you play them. No, 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 I'm, a, I'm just I just want you to tell me the record. Just tell me the record. How wins loss? I don't need anything else. Nothing fancy. Out of what? Out of the whole season? No, I'm no, no numbers. Tell you, numbers. Out of all seventeen games. Seventeen. Seventeen. So out games. of all seventeen games, tell me six and six and eleven, seven and ten, whatever. I don't care. All right. For week one against the 49ers. Well, week two. <laughs> give me a second. We two at, at Green Bay. That, that, that'd be good. Then I'm going that route. Yeah, go ahead. All right, cool. So I'll count. I'll count wins on my one hand. I'll count losses. Okay. <laughs> I think we should switch. switch okay. Switch. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Because yeah. you got two hands. <laughs> yeah, I got, yeah. one, I got two hands. You got one. Hand. Okay. Good. At Green Bay. Lost. Texans. Probably a win. At New York Giants. Uh, loss. At Vikings. Loss. <laughs> That was quick. <laughs> quick. Commanders. That's the Washington team now? You got yeah. it. Yeah. I think that's going to be a win. Patriots. Loss. Cowboys. Loss. Dolphins. Loss. Lions. <laughs> Loss. Is there a Tigers in, uh, of course, they're the Bears. Oh, my. Keep going. <laughs> At Falcons. Loss. Jets. Loss. Packers. Loss. Eagles. Loss. Bills. <laughs> Not possible win. You'd be surprised. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He's, he's giving him a one. he's giving a lucky one. He's Lions. Fight. The Detroit. They've been good, haven't they? No, they haven't. Oh, then possible one right there too. You just haven't won in week ten, though. Please make that make sense. Where are they playing? Which one's in Detroit? Which one's in Chicago? Week ten is at Detroit. Week no, excuse me. Week ten is at Chicago. Week seventeen. Oh, okay. Is at, they may have, if they were going to play in Detroit. Week seventeen is at Detroit, but okay. Yeah. Week eighteen. Vikings. Loss. So they are four and... Twelve. 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 Cool. Wow. You know what? I'm going to ask you the same question. Ha! You count losses, I'll count wins. Mm-mm-mm. 49ers. Loss. Green Bay. Loss. Texans. Loss. Giants. Loss. Just put them all in 17 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. a fighting chance. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, which one... No, not the Commanders. I think, I think they're gonna win one Detroit game. That's just it. That's the crazy thing. So you're I, gonna go one and sixteen. I'll go one and sixteen. 
Huh? Uh, no, there's you, no you, way. There's you no have, way. You have faith. Yeah, there's no. There's you have, no. You have the greatest faith I've ever heard. There's no freaking way. Any yeah. of those other teams? Hell no. Like, especially not the damn Bills. The Bills, I think they're gonna get murdered. But I feel like at least with they're Detroit, gonna them. they're gonna go. They're gonna feel bad for them. They're gonna the, be like, come <laughs> with this one. But go you ahead. know what? If I bet you any money, if the Bills are in the playoffs by that time frame. What's it called? They're going to end up using the substitute players, and that and probably gets you. They're still with us. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yes. All right. So, where are we at? You count, lo- you count losses. He counts wins. Okay. So, 49ers. Win. Mm. They have Trey Lance. Okay. At Green Bay. Loss. Texans. Win. At New York. Giants. Win. At Vikings. Loss. Commanders. Win. At Patriots. Monday Night Football. Listen, with the draft class that Bill Belichick just pulled out of his ass, like literally pulled out of his ass, mm-hmm. I don't even know, man. That's a toss-up. Okay. <sighs> Loss. Mm-hmm. That's on you. At Cowboys. I hate the Cowboys. That's a win. <laughs> Hey, I despise a cowboy. That's a win. <laughs> Any day of the week, I don't give a rat's ass who the hell's a quarterback. Hell, That's funny. Jim McMahon himself could be quarterback, and I'll still pick the Bears over the Cowboys. I said what I said. I meant what I said. Next. Dolphins. <laughs> Loss. At Lions. Win. At six. Okay, we're at six so far. Win. All right, good. Uh, at Falcons. Win. At Jets. Win. At Packers. Loss. At eat no. That Philadelphia. Loss. Bills. Loss. That's definitely loss. Mm-hmm. At Lions. Win. At Vikings. Loss. <laughs> Where are we at? I had nine. Okay, so at eight. I guess I have more faith in y'all. Oh, Shoot. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. I gave them four wins. I, yeah. I put them against the Bills. Yeah, you got, you're a little too generous yeah. there. You're a little too, too generous, generous there, actually, three. A little too generous you for somebody who's not going to be watching it. I, would, I didn't watch it when they, when they had Mitchell Trubisky, and they still won more games than what I expected. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I, just, I already knew, I knew that game play, how that happened, but just saying. I know how it happened. It's just, it's all good. So, yeah. Which team is going to have the easiest schedule? Huh? Other than uh, Tom Brady, what no, team? He actually, no, he's gonna have a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I can tell you that. I can tell you that right now. Hold on, go ahead. Uh, keep asking another question though. But other than that, I think NFL season is gonna be very interesting to see the least polls. I'm sorry, young man, but we just found out that Jar- Jarvis Landry, a Pro Bowler, got picked up by the Steelers. Saints. By the Saints. They're building a James monster down there. James Winston. James They're Winston. They're building a monster down there. Got dude. a weapon in Jarv- Jarvis Landry. Okay. They're building, they're building a monster in this in, in Nola. And what Watch surprises out. me is that Pose is still adamant in saying, you know what, guys? We believe in Fields. We're building the future for him to succeed. Easiest it's be great. Schedule. Sorry, Washington right. Commanders. <laughs> they have the easiest schedule? So they're saying that Chicago is going to be a very easy one. That's what they're saying. Thanks. So that so here goes the easy schedule, top ten. Commanders, Cowboys, Eagles, Giants, Lions, Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Bears, Ravens. Top mm. ten for easy schedule. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, look. Yeah, the Bears have an easy schedule. The Bears actually do have an easy schedule. From most of it, we counted eight as whoopings. <laughs> oh, by the way, hold on. Five wait a minute. From wait a minute. Day. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And this is the thing that gets me upset. Green Bay has a number 11 easiest schedule. Yep. I said what I said, and I meant what I said. Green Bay has a number 11 easiest schedule. Well. The team with the hardest schedule, the Los Angeles Rams. Ooh. Top five hardest schedules. Rams, Cardinals, Bengals. I'm surprised the fact the Bengals are mm. not number two. Mm-hmm. Bucks, 
San Francisco 49ers. Damn. Those are your top five hardest schedules. Those are going to be most watched, most watched football games. Huh? Oh, very sure. true. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I'm just. Uh, well, I'm not surprised with the fact that the NFC East has the easiest schedule. All four of them have the easiest schedule. That's typical. I mean, they're the punch back of the, of the NFL. In Pretty soon it's going to be the NFC in North. In a sense. Well agreed. Pretty soon it's going to be the NFC North. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, man, it's... Yeah, back to what you're saying, though. In regards to, you know what, like I told you, down, down in NOLA, they're, build, they're building a monster. Uh-huh. They're building a monster down there. Well, yes. It just doesn't make any sense, polls, on the moves that you're making. What it still tells me, and I think actually you can chime in on this, is that you're just trying to save money and face facts of going for the number one pick the following year, hoping you could get a, a top ten player, and at that too as well, get ready for the move to the new stadium at this point right now, and save money as much as possible for your next quota. But not happy, boycotting like I am, and it will be, but... I mean that's all I got as far as right now. It's concerned. I think I think this year I, I I may boycott. I may boycott. I may watch a couple of games here and there. I may just completely boycott like I did with Mitchell Trubisky. Uh huh. Please. All right, issue three. Anything to say to the peeps before we dip out? Nothing, man. All I gotta say is thank y'all for listening to my ramblings. Thank you for listening to mm-hmm. my randomness. Thank you for listening to the old man over here. List, but I know tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for listening to 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 Tony the kid over here. Thank you. Say whatever he says. Yep. We appreciate y'all. Smash the like button. Hashtag press play. Hashtag keep. Keep pressing on the good word. We appreciate y'all very, very much. Mm-hmm. Uncle RJ, Lisper RJ, Producer RJ, whatever the heck you want to call yourself, go ahead. What else? Big head. Right, RJ. Just, yeah. just want to see everything SG3 said. I'll see you too. All right, thank you. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in here at the Reject Rundown in the Rejects in the Booth. Sorry, look at that. Reject right. Rundown in You're the right. Booth. And Rejects in the Booth. Appreciate you guys as always. Remember to keep following us on Instagram. Take a look at us on Spotify, YouTube, and all Apple Podcasts everywhere, peeps. Other than that, we'll see you next time. And that too. Oh, my Lord. We'll see you next time. We appreciate y'all. Peace.